schedule compliance should be above 90 percent. Um, you know, <clears throat> it, it's it's very difficult in a dynamic situation to achieve this. But if you get everybody dedicated to it and everybody working in that direction, operations cooperating with with maintenance and uh, maintenance uh, putting the, the estimates to, for jobs together in a reasonable manner and uh, only breaking the schedule when it's absolutely necessary, this is very doable. Let's talk about scheduling efficiency. Scheduling efficiency is of the hours of labor that we have available to do work, how much of it are we scheduling? Uh, you know, if you if you tell people they must achieve a certain benchmark, uh, what they'll do is is schedule the things they know they can get done, and uh, not schedule other things. So, be careful what you ask for, and look at schedule compliance as well as schedule efficiency to make sure that you're uh, that you're using your resources effectively and, and you're scheduling uh, uh, work efficiently. PM schedule compliance should be above 95%. Um, you, you know, too many times, especially in reactive environments, we see people being pulled off of PMs to go handle breakdowns. So if, if you're having this situation, the, the fundamental root cause is too many breakdowns. You have to spend some time trying to eliminate those breakdowns. Well, if you, if you if your PM schedule compliance is is, is uh, above 95 percent, well, PM completion rate should be 100 percent, 100 percent, which is saying that if you didn't complete the PM on time, you still should complete it. So. Uh, there should not be a, a reason that we didn't do a PM that was uh, that was scheduled. Overtime, under 5%. Uh, I've worked in plants that had 30, 40% overtime. And I, and I tell you, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's really an injustice to people in, in the big scope of things to have them working tremendous amounts of, of overtime. Uh, what you end up with is a group of people that, that uh, move their lifestyle to, uh, to, to be fueled by overtime. And when things turn down, and we know they ultimately will, as evidenced by what's going on in our economic world today, and we have to limit overtime, we really put people in, in some undue stress. So I, I would suggest to you that if you've got big overtime numbers, uh, you need to work hard to get that down. Unscheduled equipment downtime should be under 10%. Uh, we want our equipment to be running as much as, as is possible. PM work orders to corrective work orders. It should be about 6 to 1. In other words, if you go out and do the same PM, whether it be time-based or condition monitoring, six times and you don't find any, anything wrong, or any reason to write a corrective work order, you might ought to look at uh, reducing the frequency on doing that particular routine. So a good number is six to one. Six PM work orders to one corrective work order. Total maintenance cost, uh, two to four percent of replacement asset value. And, it, like, and, and again, that's a very high level um, uh, metric. Our target. Uh, it, it's intended to get you in the ballpark. Uh, if you take a look at it and, and your uh, total maintenance cost is 20% of replacement asset value, uh, you, you, got a, you got an opportunity to, uh, to save some money. Cost by equipment item. Uh, <clears throat> you know, when you, when you look at, at CMMS systems, they're, they're designed to help you collect cost of maintaining your equipment. The, the labor, materials, subcontracts, and anything that you do to a piece of equipment should be captured on a work order. And this this metric is is, is automatic if you if you are religious and following your work order procedures and uh, putting the all the labor and materials and subcontracts for each equipment item. And this is one good way to help you locate your bad actors look, by looking at your high-cost equipment items. And 
I'll tell you, many times the, the high cost equipment items aren't nearly what you think they are. I, I was doing some work in a steel mill one time and they had this 32,000 horsepower drive that failed twice during the year. And they had to take part of the roof off to get this thing out to have it repaired. And everybody thought that was the high cost item uh, for that year when, when, when you just talk to the rank and file. Well, as it turns out, there was a little five horsepower motor over underneath the hot mill that opened a little door to drop the slag down into a dumpster. <laughs> and quite frankly, that five horsepower motor failed some like 25 times during the year. And, and it caused more downtime and more cost than any item in the plant. So, so be careful with, with, with looking at, at data that are uh, or, or thinking about things without having the data to support a sound uh, analysis. You ought to also look at cost per unit of production. In other words, cost per ton, cost per pound, cost per whatever your unit of, of production is. And uh, that, the, the target of that is just actual. You need to look at what it is and uh, c continuously seek to improve that. Failures by equipment item number. Uh, when you have a failure, uh, you know, uh, EMAIN, most of the, the, the CMMS systems out there have uh, failure codes that when something fails in your operation, you apply that code to the work order and you can search on failures by equipment item number, which uh, is very, very helpful again in finding the, the bad actors. When, when you do have a failure, <clears throat> if you, uh, you need to measure the percentage of root cause failure analysis performed on, on equipment failures. Uh, I'm not suggesting that you do a root cause on, on every failure. Some things are, are uh, quite frankly, aren't worth the investment. But, but I would say, at a, as a minimum, you should do it on all critical equipment or all high cost uh, equipment failures to try to eliminate those. You need to be looking at mean time between failures by equipment item number. Uh, Many folks uh, uh, do not use this metric, but uh, it's, it's a very wonderful metric to try to find your bad actors uh, and find out why you're having repeat failures on, on the same equipment item number. Number of emergency purchases. You know, uh, working for, for a company that, that uh, sells uh, equipment, uh, I'm, I'm not sure we give the best prices when uh, somebody calls us at 3 o'clock in the morning with the words, I got to have. So uh, be careful on how much you're spending on emergency purchases. <clears throat> the percentage of emergency work by area. You know, <clears throat> I've been in many operations where everything that's requested by certain areas is, is an emergency or it's a safety, they, they found that little loophole too, to try to get things done faster or, you know, they wait till the equipment breaks and then we, now we've got emergencies. So one way to manage that is, is looking at what percentage of emergency work you're getting from each area and you'll find that that'll, that'll vary from uh, area to area. Let's talk a little bit more about backlog, and I thought I'd just point out some of the some of the categories that, that you ought to be capturing uh, in, in your backlog, and, and and analyzing them each week uh, to see uh, where things are, and 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 you might identify some overarching reasons uh, why your backlog is uh, is growing. Waiting on parts and materials, uh, waiting on approval or funding waiting on engineering. If that engineering, waiting on engineering backlog continues to grow, we might not have enough engineering made available to, uh, to, to uh, alleviate this situation. Waiting on labor availability, waiting on planning, waiting on outage uh, or waiting on an opportunity, waiting on a production window. Those are just a, a few of the, there may be others, but those are just a few of the areas that you need to look at each week to uh, to see if you if you've got a, a, a larger problem, we need to know what our lost revenue per hour of production is. This is very critical in helping us determine what the value of eliminating certain failures are. Uh, you know, 
I, I, I believe that you ought to know what each 1% of OEE is worth in your operation. And that's not very difficult to, to figure out. You just run everything to 100%. 100% uh, of the time scheduled, 100% quality, and 100% of the, uh, of the target speed of the equipment and uh, multiply it by the, by the sales price, and that's how much total revenue can be possibly generated out of your operation. And divide that number by 100, and that'll give you what each 1% is worth. There are other, there, let's talk about benchmarks for a minute. <clears throat> and, and like I said, be careful using, using benchmarks, because if, if you make them absolute, uh, you, you just demoralize people in many, many cases. Uh, there are external benchmarks that, that come from your industry, that uh, come from competition. Uh, some industries have societies that, uh, that, that uh, capture and publish uh, industry benchmarks. There are internal benchmarks uh, measuring, you know, most of you that work in big corporate clients know that, that, that our senior managers like to measure from one plant to another. And many times they don't take into consideration the limitations of one plant versus another. And uh, it, can, it can be pretty uh, demeaning. The, the best benchmark that I can tell you that I, that's worked for me is best demonstrated in your plant. Uh, if you've done it before, uh, the likelihood is that you can do it again. Uh, and what you have to do is find the, the the best demonstrated rate that works for you. Um, the, most of our plants had a design uh, speed and a design rate uh, at one time, and and most of us have modified and added to and changed our plants so that those those design numbers really don't apply anymore. So what we have to rely on is uh, a little test to determine what our best demonstrated rates and variables are. <clears throat> That's all I have on uh, uh, reliability measures. What I'd like to do now is open it up for uh, questions.